All right, so we're moving on to uh, residual limb care and amputee athletes. And I'm going to uh, start off by referring back to uh, Nick's, Nick's talk. And uh, Nick showed you when he dealt with uh, track and field athletes that there were quite a lot of injuries with respect to uh, individuals who are limb deficient. And at, at first, we were quite surprised by that. We thought that the, the athletes who were wheelchair users were going to have the majority of the, um, the injuries. And then we saw that actually this group of athletes who have um, limb deficiency and have residual stumps have a lot of problems. And what I'm going to show you is not only about the uh, injuries, but we're going to talk about some of the medical conditions as well. So... Um, i show you this uh, picture because um, this is the uh, South African group of Paralympic athletes that I've looked after for uh, since 2008. And uh, regardless if they are swimmers, uh, track and field athletes, um, whatever the discipline, every single one of them have had some kind of a stump issue uh, in my care. And there's some of them who are serial stump issue people. They have stump issues every single year. And I want to try and uh, explain some of these. But the first point of departure in this is that this is an area where the sports physician can't work in isolation. The physiotherapist can't work in isolation and the coach can't work in isolation. If there's ever a setting where the multidisciplinary team have to work together, this is it. So we need our uh, prosthetist to actually be perhaps the most important person in the team when it comes to working with the uh, residuum of the leg. And why this is the case is uh, going to be apparent in, in just a moment. But I was preparing today for um, a, a, a group of medical people who perhaps had no experience, uh, prior experience, in prosthetics uh, and, and people with, who are limb deficient. So let me just start at the beginning and say that a prosthesis is made up of a socket that surrounds a residual limb, and it has a terminal device. A terminal device could either be a hand or a foot, and then there's an apparatus to connect uh, and adjust the position of the socket relative to that terminal device. Um, the socket is perhaps the most important part because that is what is custom made. Now, uh, just let's stop there for a moment because uh, this is not the case in all individuals who've lost a limb, that the socket is custom made. For example, if I show you a picture from Angola in Africa, here we have some uh, prosthetic limbs that you can pick the one that most suits you and that is the one that is used. So maybe just something to bear in mind that it's a luxury actually to have a socket that is customized to the individual. So the uh, terminal apparatus, uh, whether that's a, a foot or a hand, that is custom made, uh, or sorry, commercially obtained, and there are many companies uh, that actually produce those. Um, and sometimes, uh, more often than not, you will find that an individual has a two different types of uh, prosthetics. There's one for everyday use, and then there's one which is a sport prosthesis as well. And that's important to remember because often you'll find that there's a problem, and what do we do? We go to look at the sport prosthesis because those are when we're actually looking at the peak forces that are going through the stump socket. But it's often the everyday ones where there might not be as high forces, but the forces are chronic over time. And there might be a problem there that actually needs to be addressed. So these are the um, uh, main components, as I've said, the, uh, the foot, the knee in this instance, um, the shafts, and then this here is the interface, which is the stump socket interface. And this itself is divided into different components. There's the frame, which is the out outside. And then there is a liner. A liner can be uh, polyurethane or silicon. In some instances, uh, one can have a, a sock. And then there's a suspension system. And a su suspension system is really what is responsible for keeping the stump attached to that socket. And that can either be um, through a pin or it can in more old-fashioned uh, um, harnesses, that can, uh, old-fashioned sockets, it can be a belt with a harness. But these days, the uh, state of the art is uh, suction valves 
or osseous integrated prosthesis where the prosthesis actually is drilled uh, into the bone. So these liners and socks, uh, or the liners uh, rather, are very important and uh, I will show you why in just a while. In fact, um, if one looks at this particular uh, slide, uh, it shows a liner and it shows the importance of the, the, the liner. Um, I was very interested to, to note that when I went to go visit a prosthetic uh, factory in Iceland, um, they allowed this group of, of scientists and doctors to actually go through the entire factory and actually see how the prosthetics were made, but you were not allowed into the liner area. So the liner technology is what is protected as very proprietary. And uh, when I show you the um, slide on the, the money side of this, you'll actually see why. So your liner is there to reduce your pressure peak. So for, it has some function to actually reduce those pressures. It's to absorb your shear forces, which are the forces that actually work against the skin. And it's to improve your suspension, to reduce your soft tissue displacement. And uh, you can also get some liners which are impregnated with certain agents. And those ingredients are dispersed via the liners through to the skin. So uh, this is big business. And if you have a look at uh, these costs here, non-automated, sports-specific prosthesis alone could cost up to $15,000, and this has probably escalated in the last uh, four years since I made the slide. Um, they have a two-year lifespan under heavy athletic use, so you can see how often people are going to need to change it. The protective sleeves of the residual limb can add another $1,500 per year, and depending on the level of training that's necessary for a patient to return to sport, rehabilitation, all of these things could cost another $5,000 to $15,000 dollars in the first year and then two thousand to five thousand dollars annually then because i told you that the problems with the stump happen occur uh, you can add imaging to that and you can see you start to build uh, um, quite a lot of money here so the cost of uh, maintaining a sports prosthesis and being in a competitive athletic environment can cost between twenty to thirty five thousand us dollars per year but this is the most important slide that I'm going to show you. And to understand why there are problems, uh, you need to understand this particular slide. So here you have a socket, and we know that the stump fits in uh, to the socket. So this area here is the interface between the human being and the technology that they're going to be using. This interface transmits the forces from the ground, the equal but opposite forces that are going from the ground in reaction through to the human being again, and that results, these forces, in the forward motion. So these load stress cycles are placed through a relatively hard interface, and this, these are hard interfaces. In fact, I saw a soft socket for the first time uh, the other day, so they, 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 be, they are changing, but this is a relatively hard interface on the skin and soft tissue. Now remember that somebody who's putting their leg into this socket, that piece of skin at the bottom of the stump becomes this, the sole of the foot. And the, the skin here is totally different to the sole of the foot. So that is why one of the reasons why you're actually getting uh, problems in this area. The skin is not the final barrier. Uh, the liner is. Therefore, this liner is enclosing the skin in a strange environment. The body's not used to this environment. We know that the biomechanics of somebody who's using a stump uh, a socket interface is abnormal. The altered center of gravity places abnormal forces going through there. Then the environment of the stump in this area, the air pressure is different. The temperature, the humidity is abnormal. It's not meant to, the skin's not meant to be placed in those environments. And the vo volume of the stump changes. Now, remember I spoke about flying. One of the things that flying does to a stump is it makes it swell. And you can get up to a 20% difference in the volume fluctuation of a stump. So, for example, if you don't watch out and you don't remove the prosthesis while you're actually f uh, flying, you can actually find that when you actually start to get the stump into the prosthesis and into the socket, when you get to your destination, you have to force it, and now you're going to get areas that are in contact that are not meant to be in contact with that specific area, and you can get skin breakdown happening. 
So the first important thing that if you're flying with athletes who have residual stumps, get them to leave the liner on or put a compression bandage over the stump while they're flying. So what happens then is you start restricting the amount of swelling of that stump and that will actually lead to a better prognosis. So when the volume of the stump changes, that alters the biomechanic interface with uh, altered pressure distribution. So this is in our biomechanics laboratory and one of our T44 athletes. And what I want to show you here is we often take for granted that, okay, if this person has got a limb deficiency and they're going to be having this stump socket and they're going to have the amputation on this side, this is where we're going to have all the problems. And what I want to show you is that is far from the truth. Many people who have a limb deficiency actually have a lot of the problems on the sound side. And why does that occur? This is a force plate that uh, this particular athlete is running on. And you can see that here they're hitting the force plate with the, uh, with the prosthetic limb, with the blade. Here are the forces that are generated. So it's about 2,000 newtons. And here, uh, once he's passed through, once he's hit that force plate with the sound side, more than double the forces are registered on the sound side. So we find that there's a sparing on the prosthetic side and an increased transfer of forces to the other side. So you could get a single um, below knee amputee having these problems due to the altered center of gravi gravity on the sound side in this particular individual had a medial tibial stress syndrome on the sound leg, overloading of the contralateral facet of L5 and even working through our slings, he had a, a shoulder problem on the contralateral side as well. So one has to bear all of these things in mind and perhaps we start to understand why we start getting so many acute chron chronic injuries in the population who are limb deficient. And this uh, just shows you again, here's our athlete that I spoke about. He's in a uh, aeroplane seat. You can see he's a, a, a tall individual, but far too little space here. And um, this is the kind of uh, problems that happen. There's certain areas that we know specific to this stump that tend to swell uh, when he flies. Right, so what happens to the skin in this environment? We know that the skin's there for many important things, temperature regulation, excretion, sensation, we know that when you have an amputation, the skin condition changes. We know that there's reduced sensation in that skin. What does that mean? That you don't know when you've hurt that area. So often they can report late. The environment is abnormal. And here you have that difference between the sole of the foot and the popliteal fossa, which literally becomes your uh, sole. So when we look at the irritants, uh, we know that there are extrinsic issues that can irritate the skin. They are intrinsic. There's a mechanical, hydration, chemical, bacterial, heat and thermal, radiation issues. They all are factors that can actually uh, alter or irritate the skin. Then they're intrinsic. We know that uh, th this area of the skin is susceptible to allergy because it's in content, uh, contact with uh, foreign things. And there are certain disease states. So... The big take-home message that I want to give you is that skin lesions that occur on a stump, however small they are, they are very, very important because they can just accelerate into an excessive disorder, time off the prosthesis, onto crutches and out of competition. And that's not what we want. So anything minor that happens on a residual uh, limb is a potential danger. So what are the important things? Treat early. Continued vigilance, keep watching that stump every day and know that skin lesions don't heal on their own accord. That wait and watch phenomenon is not good in this setting. We like to treat these early, but most important, what I've learned over the years is don't use needles. My initial instinct was if there's a, anything wrong with the skin and they could see any evidence of pus, put in a needle and drain it. This is not the place to do that because that will be like inducing a stress fracture. Always say that a skin break in somebody who has a stump is like having a stress fracture. It's going to take a long time to heal. So 
have a look. I mean, um, I'm sure that these slides are going to be made available to you. I haven't got time to go into there uh, in, in very much detail. But we know that inadequate washing, sweating in gym, not cleaning afterwards, all of those things are high risk factors for uh, stump problems. Smoking, if we have any athletes that actually smoke still, the amputees, that makes a high risk for stump problems as well. And my biggest friend is Bactroban or Muripresin, which is uh, something that actually I go with uh, a lot and use it. Now, there's some conditions with the stump that actually look worse than they are. This is uh, stump edema syndrome. You would think that this is uh, infection, but it isn't. This is somebody who just has um, uh, got a forced this stump into the socket after flying, and they've got stump edema. And if one treats that uh, conservatively, it will go away. Um, now, I thought I'd just show you this. Uh, this is one of my athletes. Uh, here I am. I, I don't usually, I'm not horrible to my athletes, you see. I don't usually do this. Is a, this is a mocked up picture, you see. Um, and here's Eva uh, laughing at me, you see. Uh, now, what's the story here? Now, we have Otto Bock who is with us here. And Otto Bock provide a wonderful service. And they go and they allow, fix all of these stumps and these sockets for free. But the problem is, and particularly <laughs> coming from a country where not everybody has got access to these wonderful things that uh, we take for granted, a lot of the athletes will go directly to Otto Bock as they arrive there to get a new socket or a new flashy liner. And they try, they make that critical error of doing something new in competition. And this is what uh, Ahmad did here. Ahmad ignored all my warnings and he went to have a brand new socket made with uh, the South African flag printed on it. And he, two days later, he couldn't move. So we also know uh, what Nick showed us about that a lot of the amputee athletes get into the village. They walk too much. So I'm not going to uh, spend much time on that. I just want to give you another message. Uh, these small little lesions that you see whenever there's any time of any breakdown, so this superficial erosion, treat this as a stress fracture in evolution. Yes, you can get your contact dermatitis. There's anything else that you can get on your normal hands, you're going to have an increased chance in this area because of the materials that are used. Uh, there's non-specific eczema that can be weeping as well that you need to actually go and expose this to the dry air. Um, here we have these little epidermoid cysts as well. These little epidermoid cysts are perhaps one of your first indicators that you're having a fitting problem with your socket. So uh, one takes care of these by actually sending the patient early back to the prosthetist to actually have these sorted out. This is infection. When you see this shiny skin uh, with underlying warm skin, uh, we know that those are important and those need uh, not local antibiotic. These need IV infusions, admissions. We get that sorted out as quickly as possible. On a person who has got two or four functioning limbs, these little skin tags I would lop off without any problem. If you do that in an amputee athlete, in the area of the residual, you will induce a stress fracture and that athlete will be out. So leave these skin tags alone, particularly around the time of competition. Just know that there are horrible things that can happen in a residual stump. There can be a squamous cell carcinoma uh, that can occur. This which looks like warts isn't necessarily warts. Don't uh, I, um, assume that that is warty. Those are from pressure gradients that happen and uh, form like that over time. Know that there are also issues to do with bad amputations where there's not enough uh, skin that actually occurs or soft tissue under the stump. You can see that those are problematic. So your plain form x-rays can help you. Low dose uh, x-rays are also worthwhile in actually showing how snugly your socket fits. That's a good fitting socket. This is a poor fitting socket where there's area and space below. So that's got value. And of course, the gold standard with these stump problems is MRI, particularly with stump pain. This is an athlete here who has dual pathology. We thought that the, the problem causing the pain here was this um, bursa, that uh, sub-stumpal uh, bursitis that is here. But this was more than that. Look at this neuroma that has formed over here as well along the nerve. 
and uh, there are various different imaging for formats that we can use. This is an ultrasound where we can see the neuroma, uh, but that's a, a transverse section where one can see the neuroma in that area as well. Um, what do we do with stump pain? Uh, these are the first line treatments is physiotherapy and massage. Um, then one can use interferential and ultrasound and then a stepwise approach to the painful stump, particularly if there is a neuroma. We go through paracetamol, tramadol, and remember that these neuromas have a neurogenic origin of the pain. So amitriptyline, gabapentin, and pregabalin are also uh, worthwhile. In this particular individual that I've showed you before, none of these worked, and we had to use sclerosing injections around the neuroma to actually um, uh, get it sorted out. So, finally, this is the area where biology meets technology. Every human being is different. Every stump is different. They have their own unique problems. It's a dynamic change uh, challenge. It has to be assessed daily. The problems are, conflict, are complex. There's no one size that fits all. Get the whole team working on this. Your prosthetist is most important. Think out of the box. Remember that we know this. Take home message, every physical problem has a complex emotional component to it. And most importantly, don't mess with the stump. Okay? No needles. Leave the stump alone.